Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. You know it's Wolf and I'm back with another reaction. Patrick CC did a video on Lil Marble telling you, hey, yo, did we just react to his um his latest song Red Scarlet? Yeah, stop shada dan dada. Yo, the absolute was cool just and they did nada. Okay, yeah, yes. <laughs> Lil Marble is a fake gangster and nobody cares. So that's what it's about. Yeah. Let's check this out. It's full. Like and subscribe to the channel. Lil Mabu is an 18 year old drill rapper who is still in high school while being one of the most talked about upcoming artists today. He is being <laughs> praised for his genius marketing strategy on TikTok, which has led to him generating millions of streams across all major platforms. Now, yeah. drill rap is known to discuss and potentially glamorize the violent nature of growing up in the streets. These artists often rap about their experiences surrounding poverty, drugs, violence, gangs, killings, and worse. Yeah, yeah, uh, that is why it actually got banned in what the UK, I think, that because they say it was uh, glorifying that life and uh, it was led to an increase in violent activities, violent crime over there. Mabu covers these exact themes in his music, only he has never experienced any of that. Mabu is the yeah. son of multi millionaires, attends a very expensive private school, a collegiate school founded in nine. 1628 okay yeah that <laughs> let's continue because yeah multi-millionaires and it, yo and they son doing this well yeah and has never experienced hardship like his drill rap counterparts. However, yeah. what makes Mabu so beloved is that he's embracing his privilege and leaning into it for jokes. 50% of the people <laughs> think it's funny that he pretends True. to be a gangster, the other 50% mm -hmm. think it's corny, but they both stream his music regardless. Although mm -hmm. Mabu is being considered a marketing genius for these efforts, nothing mm -hmm. he's doing here is new. However, his controversial rise does expose the music industry Yep, yo, yo, his controversial rise does expose the music in the journey. And he's one hundred percent correct, guys. Basically he's he, he's going the six nine route, as in the trolling aspect. But six nine, he actually instead of just keeping it a trolling, he actually out here fronting as a real gangster while being fake and getting into real gangster problem. So yeah, he ended up getting arrested locked up snitching on everybody yeah that's how you know he wasn't about that life and he presented as being about that life that's why no but no one liked it but Mabu, on the other hand yeah he he's he raps about that life but he doesn't do that in real life so he's not putting himself in a six nine situation although the method he's using to rise is somewhat similar for what it truly is, and some people are not willing to accept it. Typically, when a white rapper gets any type of attention on the internet, they're rejected, labeled corny, or a culture yeah. vulture. Mac Miller got oh, this treatment, yeah, so did Post yeah. Malone. And that's because mm -hmm. this. Yo, LD. <laughs> Yo, that was crazy. Yeah. But I, I, I see, I saw that Patrick dropped a video about him. Yeah, I'm a, I, I need to check that out too. A lot, of, a lot more Patrick CC reactions coming to the channel. So let's continue. What do you say about horny or a culture vulture? Mac Miller got this treatment. So did Post mm -hmm. Malone. And that's because this Mac. stems from a long history of white artists stealing from black artists. Now combine that with a white rapper yeah, who is also making music that is inherently violent, adjacent to street life and gang life. One mm -hmm. in the head in case my ops dissin. I got goons by my side. Cock one, make the block run. Ops duck. People immediately questioned the validity of Mabu's claims based on his appearance. We saw yeah. the same reaction with drill rapper Max the Demon. Turns out he was actually as real as it gets when it comes to the stuff he raps about. The difference yeah, uh, between Max and Mabu is, well, Mabu is kind of exactly who you think he is. Yep. Stay hydrated. Now, there are some rumors <laughs> circulating that Lil Mabu is the son of a record label executive named Jeffrey Vaughn which is false. Mabu was labeled an industry plant as soon as he blew up, which is pretty common for most. <laughs> labeled an industry plant as soon as he blew up. Yeah. Most artists that seemingly pop up out of nowhere. However, Mabu's real name is Matthew DeLuca, which can be confirmed with this video that leaked of him promoting a nonprofit organization in his community. My name is Matthew DeLuca. I go to the collegiate school. I'm in ninth grade. And my favorite thing about Kids Walk for MSK Kids 
is to getting together with friends and family to support such a wonderful cause. It didn't take long yeah. for the internet to discover Matthew's father's name, Peter DeLuca, who is yeah. a funeral director and not a music executive. Oh, Peter is based yeah. out of Greenwich Village in Manhattan. Mabu has filmed multiple TikToks of his father reacting to his music, which is clearly not Jeffrey and definitely Peter. Now, funeral directors do make a decent amount of money, but nothing that would make them seem filthy rich. Yeah. However, we did learn that Mabu's father secured a $10 million real estate portfolio after a divorce settlement that occurred in 1998. The New York Post reported that Mabu lives at his parents' five bed, five bath, 3,327 square foot condo on the Upper East Side. Oh, yo. Yo, <laughs> yo if he gonna be quoting such expensive shit throughout this entire video, I'm gonna be having problems because you know, right now, I could only dream of stuff like that. But I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Yes, I'm putting in the work right now. Yeah. I'm working on it. As well as a 6,182 square foot manse in Watermill off of Long Island. Mabu has posted multiple TikToks of him showing strangers his music in the downtown shopping district in Southampton, Long Island, which is quite the opposite neighborhood where Mabu romanticized the idea of him getting shot at. Matthew just graduated from the private collegiate high school for boys in the Upper West Side, which has an annual tuition cost of $55,000 per year. So it's pretty. That's right now, you see that? That's college tuition in most places. College tuition. And in Jamaica, that, that, that yo, it's, it's even cheaper. How about, you, you're looking about, yeah, yeah, probably the same. But damn, that type of scratch? Pretty obvious that he comes from a wealthy family and was not raised on the streets. It's safe to assume that Mabu's parents were likely funding his rap career in the beginning. But that doesn't really explain how he got connected with rappers like PMB Rock, Lil mm -hmm. Mosey, Waka Flocka, and others way before anyone else knew about him. And ah. it turns out, the reason they connected with Mabu was not because they liked his music, but because he was providing marketing services for them. There were some rumors <laughs> floating around that Mabu- He was providing what? Marketing services? Mm, long story short, that's how he blew up. That's how he blew up because he was market providing marketing services for actual rappers. He knew what to do to make his stuff blow up uh, or blow up. Yeah. Mabu was a savvy digital marketer who was able to help increase rappers' numbers on social media and streaming services. Turns yeah. out Lil Mabu actually DM'd me three years ago looking to do some business. I own a marketing <laughs> company and. <laughs> no, stop laughing. I'm 15. I'd be down to work with you, and I was wondering if I could explain my services and what I can provide. Feel free to contact me. I work with artists like Lil Keed, 42 Doug, Lil Blurry, and other celebrity clients. My team run group chats with hundreds of thousands of people email lists, and page promotion with a reach of millions. Through the complex network, our team is able to grow platforms such as Instagram, SoundCloud, Spotify, and YouTube in order to grow your fan base, reach Damn. more people, and drastically increase your royalties. We also have direct connects to larger blogs in order to make your Google profile much more established and professional, because ultimately yeah. that is what's going to help you get verified. Now, I don't remember seeing Damn. this DM, but even if I did, I probably chose to ignore it because it looks like every other generic, hey, we can grow your page, spam Instagram email that we've all seen a million times. And yes. there is no real way to prove if his methods were legit, but judging by the fact that he was around a few pretty successful artists, as well as him blowing up his own music, is a pretty <laughs> decent indication. Yo, mathematical disrespect, bro. Yo, yo, I kept him around some innocent tweet. <laughs> Keep a teddy bear when I sleep. Damn, yeah, let's continue. That he was legit. But make no mistake, Mabu never wanted to be behind the scenes. He wanted the attention on him. Some of mm -hmm. Mabu's earliest songs can be heard still to this day on SoundCloud and Instagram. The other green. Hater DM no response to my message. Now I pull up in a foreign and she jealous necklace. I'm back, the Mabu go with me for a fast tag. Then flip a track and get it back. And no, little Mabu's on pretty fast. Hate to be hitting back, I'm pretty mad. Cause I'm next up and I'm flexed up. All these rappers looking bad. Then, uh, yeah. He switched up his sound differently, that, but that's when he was starting off. That's why he can, he got, uh, yo, he got the skill that he has now. Cause yeah, you have to start off from somewhere. Nobody, no one starts off, um, perfect. Yeah. 
you gotta release some whack crazy stuff that people are not gonna listen to or even watch yeah to learn from that and then build and come back yeah let them know yeah this ain't this this ain't a play play stuff this ain't a, this ain't no fun and games we're real out here in 14 years old mabu was rapping about girls and getting rich he even went the emo rap route for a little bit you say you miss me but never want to link when we can you used to diss me and now you want to call me a friend had to go and run up on my back from here, yeah. he experimented with New York Drill with his song Move It. He even paid me to listen to his song when I used to listen to my subscribers' music. I gave him yeah. some feedback, and he appreciated it. However, Mabu's youthful voice and heavily off-key crooning wasn't getting the attention he thought he deserved. Yeah. And when his voice finally dropped, he had unlocked even more. Yes, <laughs> when puberty finally kicked in and gave him, yeah, gave him some bass in his voice. Yeah. More potential. The song Demon Time was paired with a music video on the block surrounded by masked up dudes looking menacingly at the camera. Mabu had the imagery down, but his lyrics were tame, not very aggressive, nor believable. Same with his next track, King of the World, where his father drove him to Harlem for a few minutes to film, but his lyrics were mostly just about getting money paired with gunshot sounds as ad-libs. To promote these songs, he mostly used TikTok, constantly using his whiteness as the main marketing tool. He said that he made white people drill music, or white boy anthems. You know, it's really difficult when you're doing a school project and the group members don't hold their weight. Like, those are my ops. <laughs> <laughs> yo yo 100 percent, yo this, this that, that 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 literally was a fucking flashback bro high school yeah it's fucked up you know doing projects and your group members don't carry their own weight yo those are my ops those are my ops okay yeah <laughs> Yeah, okay. I snitched on my teacher on them. Mabu was taking the <laughs> Lil Dicky marketing strategy, making fun of his no. whiteness so nobody could do it to him. Yeah. Honestly, this is something a lot of white rappers do. Shit. Eminem did it in 8 Mile, but Mabu didn't want to be a full-on comedy rapper. He wanted people to take him seriously. He was seen in the studio with K Flock, one of the most promising upcoming drill rappers from New York. Mabu securing a collab with him would definitely impress people, but the song never was released as Flock got locked up on a federal indictment facing Rico and a murder charge. One Damn. week after K Flock was arrested, Mabu posted a snippet of a song with the rapper D Thang, who is one of K Flock's biggest ops. People immediately saw this as weird, working with people's enemies is an easy way to get caught up in some trouble. But Mabu yep. claims he was trolling D Thang because he is friends with Flock, because he was constantly posting snippets claiming that D Thang is trash and ruined the song. Even though Mabu paid D Thang for the feature long before he ever met K Flock, and Mabu <laughs> did eventually end up releasing the song. Yo. Either way, both K Flock and D Thang were locked up, and Mabu was yeah. able to profit from both of them. Yo, <laughs> yo, we were gonna make enemies like that, dog. But he. he... But for real, he wasn't about that life. He wasn't about that life. He was just about that work, yeah, and that music. From there, Mabu linked up with another Bronx Drill rapper, Sha E.K., who is another enemy of K-Flock. Maybe Mabu didn't know, or maybe he didn't care. Then on the yeah. track, Everyone K, Mabu dissed one of Shah's op, Use G's, labeling him a rat and threatening him multiple times. Lil Mabu yeah. making it out of the suburbs with this one. Bro making it into the hood with this one. It yeah. seemed like Mabu was just trying to insert himself into a beef for status because he has no actual ops in the Hamptons. People were confused how he was getting to collaborate with all these artists despite them being enemies. He could have yeah. been providing digital marketing services in exchange for a feature, but he was likely just paying them. He has no affiliation to any block or gang, so he could just work with them individually, then safely go back home to the Upper East Side. One yep, for real. That, that's true, that's true. But damn, yo, most people looking at this are upset with it, rightfully so. But if he does get big enough, I'm telling you, people are going to be paying him for a feature. Because he paying, for, he, he paying for these features now to get his name out there, to get the buzz going, to <clears throat> do his marketing thing. I'm telling you. But yeah, if you pay attention long enough, you're going to see, you're gonna see him with some names you, you never expected. 100%. Continue.
One thing about rappers is they all have a price. 5K, 10K, 20K mm. would be nothing for Mabu's dad to invest in his son's new hobby. After all, his dad <laughs> was helping him a lot with his TikTok marketing. While rolling out his song, No Snitching, Mabu's father fake reacted to the song, then dissed 6 9 and said, we making it out with this one, joking about <laughs> making it out of the hood. But the thing that really made him- Yo, yo, you see all that, that handshake? Yo, how many times do they have to practice that? I'm telling you, is it, any anytime you have a secret handshake, you have to practice, practice it a lot to, you know, get it, get it popping. Him go viral was the music video where he put a red laser beam on a knife while rapping about never snitching. The song stole the late King Von's iconic flow from Took Her to the O. This video got 20 million views on TikTok and was most people's first introduction to the rapper. His follower yeah. counts exploded and now all he had to do was just be consistent. He continued yeah. to make fun of himself for attention. Abu, like, what you got on you like? Oh, he got the now! Delete that! These are the things that push my buttons. Why would you post that with no clarification whatsoever? It was a fake firearm, and now I might have to take legal action. But his next song was... <laughs> <laughs> and that, he knows how the platform works, bro. He knows how the platform works. Yo, if I had the time, but damn. Yeah, <laughs> that's obvious. Yeah, if you pay attention, these are the stuff that gets clicks gets view if you pay attention you think ah uh, yeah rapper Didi Osama was going to shock the internet Mabu and Didi made a melodic trap ballad that transitions to a gritty drill track midway through the transition features a dramatization of Lil Mabu getting shot You can tell Mabu never been in a situation like that. Then Mabu says, thank God, that's the plan. Obviously, yeah. nobody wants to get shot. But critics look at Mabu strange for romanticizing an extremely traumatic and unfortunate reality for a lot of people growing up in the streets. People get shot every day on the streets of New York. Mothers, cousins, sisters, and brothers mourn the loss of their loved ones due to senseless yeah. violence. Sometimes they are just going to the corner store for a snack and get hit with a bullet. Then you have a kid from the Upper East Side who drives into Harlem for a few hours, pretends to get shot like it's some fantasy, and gets 20 million views while sleeping in his parents' mansion. But when critics speak, yo, damn, yeah, I, I can understand if he gets backlash because of this, because a lot of people that it's gonna look like he use, he um using an event that was tragic for them, monetize it. And make money. Yeah. Monetize make money the same thing. But yeah, you understand what I'm saying. <laughs> out, the common response is, you mad he making money? It's a yeah. song, bruh. Calm down. The reason why Mabu can do you this is that? very simple. People <laughs> don't care. People do not care about yeah. a rapper's authenticity anymore. Slim Jesus blew up in 2015 for being a white drill rapper. People thought he was actually a savage that looked like an innocent honor roll student. When Slim openly admitted that he just liked the music and didn't actually live that life, his career was ruined for not being authentic. Four years later, Lil Tecca blew up, rapping about having twin Glocks, but openly admitted <laughs> that he was not about that life. I don't have no straps for nobody. This time, a new gener- <laughs> yeah, well. I uh, threw a twin glass on and lit the candle. Yeah, man. <laughs> I got black, I got white, but you want. Uh, yo, okay, that, it was sketchy. It was sketchy, I'm telling you. That's what I'm saying. I, I, I don't got a problem with music. I enjoy music that can make uh, at least a little impression on me, you know? generation of music fans emerged, one that just liked the music and did not care about the status. So Tekka thrived and got respect for being honest. Then 6 9 snitched on his entire gang and basically admitted that his whole imagery and lifestyle was all a facade to grow his music. You see that now? That now, I don't know why, but for some reason that just feels wrong, bro. As in, <laughs> the difference with all these other rappers that ain't about that life. They did not get involved with the dealings of the, the supposed criminal organization. They did not get involved with the dealings. They just kept it in the music and left it there. So, in his situation, yeah, he a fake rat snitch, but yeah, we all love to point and laugh. And that's, 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 that's where that works. 
most people, even when they 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 listen to his music, is to troll other people. Cause yeah, <laughs> if you don't know, I I probably already said it in one of my videos, but I got this friend. Uh, I got this nigga, yo. He hates six nine with a passion, and I'm telling you, you see, because I'm I'm a fiend for yeah that that that, that beat, and I want you. At least making some form of vibe with that beat. I'm a, I'm a rock with it. And just switch my brain off and listen. Yeah, I just play this. I just play something from him to get in, get on that dude's nerves. I'm telling you, he, he, you know, do do about start cussing, fighting, and all of that stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's fun to troll him with a troll, you know. <laughs> Many people call him a genius and don't blame him for pretending. Most recently, Gunna has been labeled a snitch for admitting that his label YSL is a gang, and the internet made it very clear <laughs> that they do not care if Gunna is a snitch or not. They will be listening to his music regardless. <laughs> so the times have changed, for real. Hell, even rappers themselves don't care. Lil Durk is known for being a 100% authentic street rapper from the trenches of Chicago. Durk has lost blood family members due to street violence. Dozens yep. of his friends... Smirk. Well, at least that's what I heard. But yeah, his nickname. And died in the streets. And here he is collaborating with Lil Mabu, a rich boy who was pretending and profiting off the struggles that Dirk really had to live. If someone like Lil Dirk doesn't care, of course rap fans are also not going to care. In fact, many people would call a rapper stupid for being a real gangster. Fetty Wap just got five years for moving drugs all across the country despite being super rich and famous for music. Fan Damn. Okay, this is one thing I I advocate for. You can you can hate me if you if you if you want or or not. Yeah, if you were involved in such dealings before you got rich and famous off the music, you leave that shit alone. Once you found that stability, if you want to be involved, that's your choice. You can just have a middle. I have a middleman to wash your hands off all the dealings, but it still can't be traced back to you. This is not advice. Okay. And it's stupid to still continue to deal in those things once you make it. You don't need the risk, and the risk <laughs> far outweighs the, the rewards, I'm telling you. In Fetty Wap's case. I'm telling you, this though, and I got the soda. Yeah, Remy boys, they know us. <laughs> All fast money, no slow bucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fast money got him them slow problems. Let's continue. It's unfortunate, man. Do crazy. And I sometimes pop back and listen to some of his songs, I'm telling you. Fans are disappointed in the rapper despite their favorite song from him is literally about selling drugs. But it makes you wonder, why do fans need to be entertained by violence and murder? Why does a kid like Lil Mabu have to pretend to be a gangster, despite everyone knowing he isn't one, to get attention? What does that say about the fans? Gangster rap has been around since the 80s. It's not new. However, these days, most rap music that blows up is very violent. Drill music videos talking about killing ops get the most views on YouTube. The reason why Lil Mabu doesn't make fun frat boy music that is relatable to millions of kids around the world is because he knows that it just won't get any attention. But when yeah. you criticize Mabu for profiting off the streets, people say, keep that same energy for all the other drill rappers. But here's the difference. Matthew yeah. DeLuca can be anything he wants. His parents have deep pockets and he has the best education money can buy in the United States. He's yeah, choosing to participate true. in something that perpetuates violence to marginalized groups of people so he can profit. The reason real drill rappers don't get criticized like this is because these guys have way less opportunities. Most of these guys were literally toddlers when they were exposed to drugs, guns, and violence. It's all they know. They yep, that, that's true. And um, that's the, that's the part of this that I, that I agree with. Um, when they're saying that they're rapping about their lived experience. And most, yeah, you know, authoritative figures uh, misconstrue it or intentionally misrepresents it as them glorifying or promoting that type of lifestyle. Yeah. And I know, as I, yeah, as I said previously, this type of music, 
probably led to the increase of violence, violent activities in the in the UK. That's why they had to ban it. And I'm telling you, I'm not about that life, but I do 100% love me some fire drill music. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, yeah, yeah. Especially the ones that yo, that, those rappers that, that those unknown rappers that. Wear those anime masks, I'm telling you, yeah, yeah, I mean, yo, dude, that Obito mask, and, yeah, it's crazy, it's crazy, yeah, <laughs> but, that aside, I enjoy the music, and I, and I won't stop listening to it, I won't stop vibing out, I might make some in the future, yeah, but, yeah, uh, let's continue, when that time comes, that time comes, it's not now. They can express their pain and struggles, profit from that, and get their family out of poverty. Lomabu yes. literally made a mockery out of this, saying, I took a trip to the hood so I can make it out. He has lyrics making fun of rappers being broke in the hood, which is extremely distasteful considering he has never experienced the pain they have. His most recent yeah. song, Mathematical Disrespect, peaked at number 43 on the Billboard Hot 100, an insane feat for an independent artist. But again, if labels are trying to sign him for millions, his daddy already has that, so he doesn't yeah. need to take it. So him yeah. being an indie artist isn't really much of a flex. Most rappers sign really bad deals because they know they might never get an opportunity to make six figures in their life. They can't afford a fancy lawyer to read the contract, and they get taken advantage of for trusting the label. Also, yeah. remember three months ago when John Morant was that's that's that, that's fucked up. I'm telling you, that's hundred percent fucked up. And um, recently, um, you've heard a lot of rappers talking about the shit that they have to go through with their labels because of um fucked up contracts. And um, the most recent one I can remember, because I can remember is absent when he was dealing with a lot of problems with his label. Now, yo, he signed him and benched him and wasn't pushing, pushing his, his stuff down. The dude could have been bigger, greater. I got hops and reactions coming, but the dude hasn't dropped anything new yet. So yeah, guys, let's continue. It was a guy from the suburbs, got extremely rich, and everyone called him an idiot for pretending to be a gangster. They said Ja was throwing <laughs> his life away by pretending to be something he's not. Why is Lil Mabu being considered a genius for doing the exact same thing that Ja Morant was doing? Mabu's story has two outcomes. He will continue. <laughs> okay. I, I kind of, I kind of, I kind of wondering if what I'm thinking is the reason why. It's kind of kind of messed up but yeah continue. continue to push this gangster persona until he actually gets into a dangerous situation chain snatched jumped robbed hopefully not worse or yeah. one day he will realize this gimmick is drying up he can't profit off being a fake gangster anymore and he will transition to pop music and be accepted with open arms by the music industry and if yeah. his music career fails and we all forget about him he still has extremely rich parents who will be able to fund whatever his next dream is yeah Oh guys, <laughs> that that's really, that really is crazy. That really, really is crazy. And <laughs> Lil Marvel, yo, yo, I appreciate that stuff, man. I appreciate the music. Yeah, I enjoy it, and I, I'm gonna be here reacting to more, more of his stuff, more of his his songs and stuff like that. Because yeah, I want to see what he can do, and yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, uh, promote that, 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 <laughs> promote that crazy shit. Yeah, so guys, like and subscribe to the channel, share that video. It's Wolf. Let's get it. Let's get it. Yeah.